Hello, everyone. Get ready to travel in your minds to a world much like our own, but not, but where there's more magic in it and people die uh, equally as frequently. It's D&D Night on FMK Champions. I am your host, Carolyn Page, and we have with us, very excitingly tonight, some of the most magical, mystical uh, friends that we could gather around, and we thank them all for being here. They're being very funny, but you cannot see it right now. First up, it's everyone's uh, favorite D&D zaddy, Sam Reich. <laughs> Greetings, friends. <laughs> And hold on to your alignment charts. Let's give it up for the lawful good, Brennan Lee Mulligan. Uh, hey there, folks. Roll initiative. It's me. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> would you say you're lawful good aligned, Brennan? Um, you know what? I would uh, for for tonight. Hey, for tonight, I'll be any alignment you need. <laughs> Whoa! Chaotic neutral answer. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Pretty sure that's called lawful horny. <laughs> And she's no princess in a tower. She's more like a blood-soaked empress in a chariot made of skulls. It's Emma Fife. Hello. Yes, that is right. Please show me my due deference <laughs> as an empress bearing a very large sword with which she has slaughtered many. Oh. Well, but all of them deserved it, obviously. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. They were mercy killings, really. Yeah, mercy killings, truly. I, I could have done worse. <laughs> So, dear sweet audience, thank you so much for joining us. We have three of our very favorite people from uh, the plains and outer realms and beyond. And with that, let's get into FMK Champions. These people are gonna play rounds of FMK. You at home are gonna vote. All right, let's kick it off with round one. Brilliant. Round, round, round. round. Outstanding. That stinger just really gets me going. Okay, so we're gonna reveal these three subjects and then our champions are gonna tell us how or why they'd fuck, marry, or kill them. Let's look at our options. They are warrior, wizard, rogue. Classic D&D &D classes here. Okay, first up, Emma. Tell okay. us, fuck, marry, kill, warrior, wizard, rogue. Well, this to me is actually a fairly easy equation to solve. Um, number one is I would definitely uh, kill the wizard because, you know, nobody wants a, a self-obsessed, like does nothing but study. Like a wizard is always going to love their research and their books more than they are gonna love you, okay? And also that doesn't seem very fun in bed because like we don't want somebody that like is more about the theoretical. We want somebody that's all about the practical and the experience. And that is exactly why I would fuck a rogue. Cause rogues, they know what's, they know what's up. You know, they got that, that worldly wisdom, that worldly experience. They're tricksy, they're up for anything. They And also like a lot of them are acrobatic and flexible. So you could probably like try out some pretty good positions that you maybe aren't necessarily uh, something that you've ever tried before. And like, we uh -huh. love a sense of adventure. And you know what, I'm gonna marry a warrior and this is why I love a himbo, okay? And like, that is, that is the himbo class. That is the manly sweet guy who is gonna just be there for you and be supportive of you. And that is what I need as a, as a career woman, is somebody <laughs> that is just gonna like be my cheerleader, be rooting for me. Um, and you know, uh, has has the, the strength and, and fortitude to protect somebody that's more into the, the sneaky, roguey and possibly spellcasty ways. I love it. Wizards, I mean, warriors are canonically himbos. You heard it here first, people. Okay, Sam, tell us, fuck, Mary kill these three classic classes. Happy to, Carolyn. Here's my take. Three, two, one. Fuck, wizard. Okay, I think we can all agree. Sex is already magical. You know, the orgasm is the closest thing we have as humans to death, to a little death. Mm-hmm. Having an orgasm, you already lose your sense of space and time. Now imagine that you're fucking someone who can in turn control space and time. Oh. And if a wizard wants, <laughs> they can make you come for a year, for, for eternity. 
The rogue and the warrior don't hold a wax candle to that option. Marry a rogue. You're gonna ask me why? You want a rogue on your side stealing for you, otherwise they're stealing from you. There's nothing more romantic than a romance between a couple of like, you know, criminals on the run. Oh. Uh, you know, me and said rogue, we would rob banks together, we would sleep in hotels, we would have little rogue pickpocket children. Uh, the only potential issue is you would lose everything in a divorce. <laughs> uh, but divorce is not one of our three options. Um, it's not. <laughs> there's no. There's no caveat. That <laughs> yeah, fuck Mary, kill divorce. And... <laughs> uh, divorce a paladin. Um, kill <laughs> warrior. What am I talking about? Divorce um, uh, bard. Uh, kill warrior. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not saying you could kill a warrior. This assumes a world in which deciding kill means you automatically kill said warrior by selecting kill. Yeah. Thereby winning the battle against said warrior. So for the rest of time, you can say you killed a warrior and be technically correct. This yes. is your opportunity, whereas yes. otherwise you would you would not have said opportunity. I think that's a very valid, logical answer. Let's see, Brennan, what say you? I'm sure people are frothing to know Fuck, Mary Kill, Warrior, Wizard, Rogue. I'm gonna have to say something. The odds of having completely different answers from Emma and completely different answers from Sam, not very likely. You'd think there'd be some overlap. Well, there's none, okay? <laughs> there's none. And I'll tell you why. Number one, uh, uh, I'll say this right now. I love warriors. Warriors are great. You think I'm gonna marry a warrior? What is the number one backstory for warriors in all these goddamn games? <laughs> Dead spouse, okay? I'm not gonna take a dirt nap to invigorate my partner to go on a goddamn quest, okay? I'm not gonna be a gravestone that some fucking jamoke with a sword comes and cries over and then says, I swear vengeance against the, you know, faction X. Not today, not ever, okay? So warriors are getting fucked because they're incredibly fit and very hot, all right? <laughs> Extremely physically active. Of course I'm fucking warriors. I'm fucking warriors all day, every day. Hot, hot hotties. Uh, number two, I am absolutely marrying wizards, okay? I've never even heard of a married wizard. So how- What about Santa? <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. You said that like it was the most obvious thing in the world. That Santa, like, I, like literally, he's got Saint in his name, and you're like, well, that's clearly some kind of dark sorcery. Nobody could visit every home, every good Christian home in a yeah. single night. Um, uh, yes, but so Santa's a great example of what the vibe of a married wizard would be. I want that energy in my life. I don't want someone who can only avenge my death. I want someone who can prevent my death using incredible abjurations that have prevented it from ever taking place in the first place. Wow. And number three, I fucking kill road. You know why? <laughs> two, <laughs> two reasons. Number one, <laughs> stealing's wrong. And number two, wow. There's the lawful good. He is lawful Moral good tonight. Judgment. <laughs> and number two, if you're so good at adventuring and you're so fucking tough and you're so fucking badass, why are you sneaking everywhere? <laughs> okay? Sneakery is not the strategy of people who can genuinely throw down. I said what I said, okay? Wow. Somebody and Google comments, sneakery. Brennan's DMs are on fire right now. <laughs> Um, He's got all the wizards sliding in yes, his DMs. <laughs> <all the wizards. laughs> exactly. Okay, with those uh, spicy takes, audience, now it's your turn to vote. We're going to open up the polls. Okay, there's a poll in the chat. Mm -hmm. Vote for who had the best answer. You decide the winner. This is the only place in the world where democracy works. This show right here. Other places, that's, that's who knows? I'm just kidding. You should vote and adopt an election. It's an election cycle. It's very important. But also this election is important and you can get the results quicker. Oh, wow. wow. Sam's got a message. It says vote Sam. We'll see if that, <laughs> we'll see if that works. So I need to go back to a point which I've made before and will never stop making. Santa is a wizard. Santa is a very powerful wizard. 
I, I was not surprised by your Santa is a wizard comment. Uh, Mostly because I know about your personal affinity for Santa. Indeed. It's a fetish, <laughs> some say. Very uh, on brand, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, Santa's hot. I'll, uh, uh, Santa's hot. <laughs> yes, Brennan? What? I, hey, I agree. He's, <laughs> there's, there's a, there's an authority thing there, but a kindness yeah. thing. He's a big old daddy bear, you know? He's yeah. got the totally. laying, I think that's, that's what we call a gentle dom. Mm -hmm. a, gentle a gentle dom, dom. right? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. love he's, that. It's like he's very he's he's got a he laughs like a big bowl of jelly, but also he right. sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake and he knows if you've been bad or good. Ooh. So be good for goodness sake. Mm. That's is a, that's a gentle mm -hmm. dom. That's the a gentle dom. dom. Yeah. It's yeah, and I also times. feel like he's got a whole uh a whole legion of slave laborers in the form of mm. elves. But <laughs> that I'm the lesson. They're kind of into it, but they're kind of into <laughs> no, it. You know what I, I mean? See. Like he's a gentle dom. He's it's like a consensual. Yeah, it's very yeah. consent. It's it's consensual slave labor. You're, just to be clear, you're saying that Christmas elves like to be taken control of. Correct. They, yeah, they get yeah. off on it. Yeah, yeah, they get off. They're on it for like sure. immortal, like uh, young people, immortal eighteen year olds that are into it. <laughs> Okay, this is yeah. getting way out of hand. Josh, Whoa. do we have a winner Whoa. yet? Whoa. Yes, we do. Uh, now that we found out that elves are bottoms, uh, we have a winner. <laughs> Congratulations go to Brennan with 40% of the vote, 47% uh, of the vote. Uh, Sam in second place with 41 and Emma in third. Wow. The math on that works out that my arguments were not very liked by the chat. Because <laughs> I guess this chat is a bunch of wizard stands. Yeah. I said what I said. Yeah, you wizard do. stand. I stand by it. All right, let's see what happens in this next round. Let's get ready for round two. Round two. Round two. My favorite game, Arranged Marriage. We are going to reveal our subject and our contestants are going to tell us all about their dream wedding to said subject. Are we ready? Oh, yeah. Hell oh, yes. They're ready to get This is married. my round. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're all getting married to a bag of holding. Whoa. Ooh. Okay, I, Brennan, you're up first. I legitimately have that bag. I have you that do? bag. <laughs> can you hold on one sec? Yes. We will wait for this. No, oh, wow. I, 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 I declare oh. disqualification. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Brennan uh, knows his bag no a little bit too intimately. <laughs> now, you'll have to forgive me because me and my bag uh, know each other quite well. What the hell's the question? What am I? <laughs> what did you describe your dream wedding to the bag of holding? Okay. So, dream wedding to bag of holding. Number one, all of the guests arrive and walk into one of the happy couple because the venue is the bridegroom, the mm. bag of holding. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. It's great. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. saved mm -hmm. a goddamn fortune, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. so I have, all the guests can fit in there. And the best part is everybody can step out and we can rearrange some little tiny furniture and now mm. single use, you don't, you don't need a separate location for the venue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> everyone gets a little sack of like lint and loose stuff that's just in the bag. And, uh, and I think, I think our vows would, be, I obviously would promise to cherish them and never put a portable hole inside of them. And oh. that's a deep cut. That's a maybe too deep cut to, but you should never put a portable hole in a bag of holding. Uh, you'll create an interdimensional vortex and we'll uh, be quite bad. Um, Very bad. <laughs> uh, and then we'll honeymoon in Oaxaca and then that'll be great. I uh, love that. I love part. it. That sounds dope. Yeah. Well, Hawk has got an amazing, amazing culinary tradition. You know? Oh, great food. Yeah, <laughs> great food. fantastic yeah, food. Definitely. Yeah. It's not all about the bag, okay? I can have some stuff I want at the wedding, too. Brennan <laughs> actively planning a wedding and extremely on the brain, <laughs> ready with those answers. Emma, tell us, what's your dream wedding to the bag of holding? Look, what is a bag of holding for, if not to hold all of 
the elements you could ever want for your wedding and you know just quietly transport you unseen on a ship to a destination wedding. You don't even have to pay a passage fare. So what I would do is, again, my my bag of holding uh, the, the bridegroom in this situation, <laughs> myself and all of the friends who I would want to join us on a destination wedding, we all make our way inside of the bag of holding, okay? Then a, a rogue who I previously fucked but I'm still on very good terms with, uh, subtly slips us on board. Again, you want to have the rogues on your side. They slip us on board a ship. We sail up and down the Menagerie Coast. We have a great time. We're we're on a cruise that we didn't pay any money for because we're hiding out in the bag of holding. Then we can get dropped off at a fabulous destination, all crawl out of the bag, and then we're there. We didn't spend any money getting there. So all the money that we saved up for the wedding can then go into having an elaborate beachside feast. Everybody wants a, a nice beach destination wedding. And then, you know, we and the thing that's also great is that we don't have to pay any sort of import taxes to bring our cheaper wine from the region from whence <laughs> we've traveled because we've just smuggled it in the bag of holding. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that you're thinking about all the angles. You've got a really nice thing planned. Delightful. Sam, tell us, what's your dream wedding to the bag of holding? Look, my two fellow contestants, they are D&D fanatics. I myself, comparatively an amateur. So I Googled this this afternoon <laughs> and happened to know I that a bag wait. of holding can only hold 25 cubic feet. So look, 50% of marriages end in divorce, right? That is a depressing statistic. Uh, that's because, you know, people grow and they change, they exit their honeymoon phase with each other, right? So how do the bag of holding and I keep it fresh? As follows. We all know that if a bag of holding is overloaded, its contents spill over onto the, the astral plane. So I myself, will climb into my beloved, as will all of our wedding guests, thus overloading it, since it can only hold 25 <laughs> cubic feet, thus being scattered onto the astral plane, where the bag of holding will then join us. And since time and age are not a factor in said astral plane, we will therefore stay in our honeymoon phase forever. <laughs> and when the wedding is over, we will hand out party bags of holding to all of our guests so that they may do the same. Wow, love that Sam's recipe for a happy marriage is literally never change. Sounds healthy, <laughs> <laughs> sounds healthy. Okay, audience. Elaine would, uh, Elaine might agree with you <laughs> on that one. Never Wild change. answers. Okay, now audience, it's your turn to vote. The uh, There's a poll gonna be dropping in chat. You gotta vote on who have the best answer, whose answer you like the best. Mm -hmm. I just wanna I just want to say in certain editions of D&D, there are bags of holding that can hold more than 25 cubic feet. <laughs> Thank you, Brendan. I'm sure you're right. I'm type, absolutely positive you're right. In 3.5, a Type 4 bag of holding can hold up to, I believe, 250 cubic. No, don't jerk off. Don't jerk off your eyes. Don't jerk off two dicks into your eyes. <laughs> It's Brennan, the D and D rules lawyer. He's at Mulligan's at it again. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> listen, we all love it. Brennan never changed. Yeah. We're gonna shove you into the astral plane, so you yes. never. I was, never I was the one who. So he who, never changes. <laughs> I was the one who learned about the topic of today's stream and went, "Oh no, oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna commit 30 minutes of my day to this in the <laughs> afternoon." <laughs> Excellent, excellent. We appreciate it. Those were, oh my God, all great, all great answers. I, now I really want Oaxacan food, but that's got to mm. wait till after the show. Josh, do we have a winner for this round? Yes, we do. We have an overwhelming winner. Uh, congratulations go to Sam. That's a that's a <laughs> critical roll. That's a he rolled a twenty on that one uh, yeah. with uh, fifty eight percent of the vote. Emma in second place with 27% of the vote and Brennan in third with 14%. Wow, Brennan. It's the Boy Scouts motto, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, that means it's time for round three. Round three. 
just like the tables turned on Brennan, now it's time for a game called Turn Tables. Uh, our contestants are going to be the ones getting fucked, married, and killed this round. We're going to reveal our option, and our contestants are going to say how they'll be fucked, what their marriage will be like, or describe their own grisly murder by this option. Let's take a look. It's a lich. It's a lich. Yeah. Magical, mystical, Ugh. undying. Okay, Sam, Ugh. you're up first. You're gonna get married to this lich. <laughs> Tell us about that. Stay, listen, me as the marriage aficionado here. Sure. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Let me come with me, if you will. It's a beautiful autumn day in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, that's my cat, Catterwalling. <laughs> <laughs> Is that our music? What the fuck? Um, I had nothing to do with that. Oh my god. My, my cat is wild this time of night. Hammers. I thought there were no Boy. cats as loud as mine, and I'm glad to be wrong. Um, it's a beautiful autumn day. I wanted an outdoor wedding. She wanted a layer wedding, so we mm. rock, paper, scissored for it, and layer it was. I'm standing under the chuppa. It's a Jewish wedding. My family is on one side of the aisle. Her undead family is on the other. I told her I wish my grandparents could be here to see this and sweetheart that she is. She rose them from the dead, so there they are. Funeral procession music plays. It's her favorite. She walks down the aisle, bony arm and bony arm with her father, who looks the same as her. They look exactly the same. She arrives at the arch. I take her hands, look at her. Tenderly, tenderly as I've ever looked at another living or unliving thing. She looks at me expressionless. She's a skeleton. I read my vows. You are my life, my breath, my sustenance. She reads hers. I'm lucky I don't require any of those things. I hand her a ring. I say, with this ring, I thee wed. She hands me an in rune box that says and says destroy this, and I am no longer immortal. <laughs> I move to tears. The rabbi says, if anyone has a reason, these two should not be married. Speak up now or forever hold your peace. And I'm just waiting for my ex, Melissa, to stand up. <laughs> but I look over at where she's sitting and she seems paralyzed. And I look back at my lich. And she winks at me, or I think she does. It's hard to tell. She's <laughs> a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> we are married, and we honeymoon in Oaxaca, Mexico. <laughs> yes! Because the food there is terrific. It's just a culinary scene. <laughs> Cannot be beat. Okay, that's great. I can't wait to go to that wedding. I really hope it works out for you guys. Um, now let's move on to something a little spicier. Brennan, you are going to get fucked by a lich. Tell wow. us about it. Okay, I've been thinking about this a lot. I bet okay, you have. I'm <laughs> dreaming of this moment. So here's the deal, right? A lot of monster fuckers running out here in these streets. Okay, people be wanting to fuck Beast from Beauty and the Beast. People want to fuck Beast from X Men. People want to fuck a lot of strange, monstrous type of people out here. Liches not only are undead gross, but they're not even the sexy, undecomposed undead like vampires. Vampires are like fresh. These are like, like look at this person. They're not, they're not looking so hot. <laughs> Liches sacrifice all of their earthly pleasures, all of those pleasures of the flesh for eternal painful unlife to memorize magic. So in my head, I'm like, why does this lich want to fuck me? And then I realize <laughs> There's a lot of creepy ass magic where you've got to like fuck someone for a spell to happen. So I think what this is, is there's a lich who wants to fuck me. So at midnight while well, we're fucking, they can slit my throat and that's how a demon prince comes out. And then I'm trying to fuck them because it's a way to get invited back to their boudoir and see where they're keeping that soul at. <laughs> so I can holler at the other adventurers and be like, got some intel. It's sort of like a little honeypot. I'm like a Cold War spy in this. In this. So I think there's a lot of like weird tete-a-tete -tete with them being like, 
<laughs> yes, tonight shall be to die for. And I'll be like, yeah, I can't wait either. So where do you keep like important objects in and around your bedroom? <laughs> and it's just a lot of friction. It's a lot of hunter hunted, you know? That's the, and honestly, I think it gets really sexy because of that. Oh, I love it. Old oh, Honey damn. Pop Mulligan oh. at it again. They've been calling me Honey Pop Mulligan for years. <laughs> really and finally, have. it makes sense. <laughs> you really have. It finally tracks. That is delightful and titillating. But now it's time to get gruesome. Emma, you're going to get murdered by this lich. How does it happen? You know, what's interesting is that it really stems from the same place that Brennan was talking about. As somebody who's into the magical arts, I have long heard rumor that there are spells which require a lich to fuck someone and slit their throat whilst doing so. So naturally, I venture into the lich's lair with the intention of being that sacrifice for my party. But the lich, instead of trying to get down and dirty, just immediately, immediately goes for the death approach. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, no. I get tethered to it straight away, uh, which is unfortunate because then when I try to fight back and fail my saving throws, I immediately take half of the damage that the lich would have taken. Um, and, uh, and and then, you know, this this is a lich in its lair. This, this lich has been around the block. It's one of those ones that is like, it's like basically like full skeleton with just like a little bit of gross decay face going on um but it's got you know these elaborate robes this this lich really thinks it's hot shit um and and really decides to show off uh with some legendary action so unfortunately in addition to being tethered uh i'm uh, you know i'm i'm like in my little cute attire so um my my ac is very low right now uh and also my constitution's not that high because i'm like into the magical arts i'm more of like a spellcaster type um so i i definitely immediately cannot handle that disrupt life uh cost and i take 21 uh necrotic damage and that's that's all she wrote that's all I'm she wrote I am really wondering what the AC of a negligee is now. Someone, <laughs> someone tweet that sad at me. Okay, chat, now is your chance to vote. Uh, whose answer did you like the best? Very different answers. This is a, this is a mind fuck round. The, the, okay? idea, the idea of trying to seduce a lich and being like, <laughs> Oh, you caught me coming out of the shower <laughs> and just getting blasted by a stream of ghosts. <laughs> just pure necrotic energy. It's too. It's too funny. It's, it's like funny. It's worse the the death or the rejection. Really, I, mean, I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, because it's really both. You know, because yeah. you go yeah. in and you're like, I look hot. I'm gonna get this <laughs> lich to fuck me, and the, the lich not only rejects you but also brutally murders you. you I look, mean, that's that's how it felt in high school. Yeah. <laughs> You've like made your peace. You're like, I can't believe it. I'm gonna like find a way to keep my stomach down. I'm gonna fuck this nasty <laughs> skeleton. I'm gonna fuck this nasty, stinky skeleton mm -hmm. for justice. And the skeleton's like, you're gross. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah. Well, you you know you can't charm a lich. Like they're they're immune to charm. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. It sounds like Jokes a new, on me. <laughs> like Netflix documentary, like all these women getting bamboozled. It's like this By lich. Lichens. By like, the undead. <laughs> I thought you had treasure. You kept asking me for gold and I'd wire it to you. And now I'm dead. I don't know. Josh, do we have a winner? Do we have an answer for that round? Yes, in fact, we do. We have raised that answer from the dead. Congratulations to Sam. Uh, oh. 41% of the vote. Emma in second place with 34%. And Brennan in third place with 24 Wow. wow. Okay, quick tally. That's going to be five points for Emma. That's going to be seven points for Sam. And five points for Brennan. It is a tight game, but it's still anyone's championship as we go into the final fuck with round four. Okay, this week we pulled our audience on the most fuckable D&D &D monster. 
most fuckable D and D monster. You're each mm. going to have 30 seconds to guess as many as you can, and everyone you guess that was in the audience's top 10, you get a point for. So really, it's anyone's game. You could have gotten no points the whole game, which is not possible, and still have won this round. Okay, uh, who's gonna be up first? Let's start with the forerunner. Let's start with Sam. Sam, you're gonna be up first. How so Brendan you. and Emma, if you could take your headphones out. Oh, we'll, uh, oh yeah. When, you, when we bring you up on screen, then uh, you'll get to go. Okay, we've got 30 seconds up on the board. Are we ready? Um, ready as an amateur will ever be. Fantastic. Okay, uh, do we have the 30 seconds? There it is. Oh, sweet. Go, Am go, I justifying go, go. why? Oh, okay. Uh, 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 Demogorgon. Um, um, Abominable Yeti. Um, 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 um. Oh, shit. I should be looking at the chat. I bet they have good suggestions. <laughs> um, uh, oh, uh, a Dragon. Um, um, oh, I have to be specific. Uh, this is where I fail. This is where I fail, Carolyn. Okay, that's time's up. We gave you a couple extra seconds, uh, but no, you didn't. You didn't get any. It's okay. <laughs> that's okay. All right, you keep your headphones in. Let's bring in uh, Brennan. <laughs> okay, we're back in. We're back in. Okay. <laughs> How many monsters am I guessing? How many monsters am I guessing? As many as you can in 30 seconds. We got 30 seconds up on the board. And ready, set, go. Vampire, dragon, demon, drow, elf, um, uh, uh, drider, mind flayer. Um, uh, uh, I already said demon, celestials, fey, uh, sprite, nixie, uh, nymph, uh, bugbear, goblin, hobgoblin, uh, loxodon, triton, um, uh, 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 fairy, fearbolg, uh, orc, half orc. Um, uh, we'll go with, uh, uh, I already said vampires. Um, uh, uh, Death Knight. Uh, oh God. Um, uh, uh, that's that's time, Brennan. You did great. You got four. That is very good for this round. Wow, that is hot. very good. Damn. Now we're gonna bring in back in Emma. All right, <laughs> and let's see how she does. Okay, Emma, we got thirty seconds on the okay. clock. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay, let's go. Okay, troll, dragon, giant, gelatinous cube, mind flare, beholder, knoll, cobalt, uh, um, a, a uh, succubus, vampire, uh, a sea hag, any various elemental, um, uh, a, a ghast, a ghoul, uh, a lich. You know, liches are definitely very fuckable. Um, uh, uh, what did I say? Um, uh, goblin, hobgoblin, uh, uh, mummy, um, uh, uh, centaur uh minotaur okay amazing let's get everyone else uh let's get everyone else back in because emma also got four correct and that we, we have a tie emma and brennan are tied for uh, uh, nine points. <laughs> sam coming in at a gentleman's second with seven points outstanding all You're right <laughs> We May I just say there is nothing sexier sounding than a gelatinous cube. That was <laughs> that's funny. That incredible. was the number one. It was more people wanted to fuck a gelatinous cube than any other, which I don't think is a real answer. I think you guys aren't taking this seriously. Stop <laughs> doing bits and tell us which monster you really want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We had in number ten was Bugbear. Number nine, Hobgoblin. Okay. Number eight, Drider. Seven, Zugtmoy. The Demon Queen of Fungi. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, six, Mimic, which okay. makes sense. Five, Succubus. Okay, and it sucks I got that. in the name. Yeah. Four, Werewolf. Oh, I Three, can't believe I didn't say Werewolf. Beholder, also a joke <laughs> answer. I thought that was a joke answer, but I said it. <laughs> Two, Mind Flare, which makes sense. And then number one was Gelatinous Cube. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I don't think you really want to fuck a Gelatinous Cube, but maybe. Uh... It's, I mean, like it's, kinda, it's like a sex toy, well, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a, a big tanga. It's flexible, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. 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 I, I mean, honestly get fun. fucking a gelatinous cube more than a mimic. You wanna <laughs> fuck a tre you wanna fuck a treasure chest with teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> we got 
got a sick <laughs> fucking audience, but they're the best audience around. Thank you so much tonight, uh, everyone watching. Thanks to our um, all of our champions and to our Tide champions, Emma and Brennan. Thank you all for coming on so much. We will see you all next week. Uh, same time, same place. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.